Hey everyone. So we got asked a question last night uh, through our social media that um, someone asking about uh, lane position. And basically, what they were asking is if they're driving down a dual carriageway and there's cars parked on the left, basically, should they use the right hand lane? And if you look at the highway code, the highway code will tell you that if the left lane is blocked, then you should use the right hand lane. However, here in Liverpool, it's quite okay for you to straddle the centre line. But bear in mind, you've got to leave the adequate clearance necessary when passing the parked vehicles. And if traffic is coming up behind you and you want to get past, then we should easily let them pass if there's enough room. If, however, the road is quite narrow and you leave your adequate clearance from the parked cars and you find that you're more in the right hand lane, then it'd be probably better just to move into that right hand lane but stay close to the white line as that's probably the best position to be in. Right on cue. How many of you have dealt with an emergency service vehicle whilst on your driving lesson? The answer is probably not many. So what would you do if there's an emergency service vehicle behind you? Basically the safest thing to do is obviously if you're driving is to pull over somewhere safe to let them go past. If however you've already stopped in traffic, this is where we leave that tyres and tarmac and traffic light so it enables you to then manoeuvre yourself out the way a little bit. Gives the emergency service vehicles time to get through the space and traffic. So another thing that's happened recently is the change to the highway code to enable you to pay for a service at a say fast food chain or something like that with your mobile phone. But for me this has never really been an issue because one, I've never used my mobile phone to pay for anything um, because quite simply I've got a bank card, I can use that, that's just as easy. Or you know you can use cash. So I don't know why it's an issue in the first place. It's a bit common sense really. Don't, why, why would you risk getting points and a fine when you don't have to risk it at all? The other thing is phone cradles. Not the minute this phone is in a cradle. And that's just literally purposely just for this video. Or whenever I'm doing a video while I'm driving. But I'm always paying attention as well. I'm not really paying attention to the camera. The other thing when it's not used for videos, it's locked away. It's in the glove box or it's in this little arm rest here. It's always out of the way. It doesn't give me any reason to be using it. My car's got an inbuilt sat nav if I need it. I don't need to use my phone for that. Common sense really. Just don't miss the points. The other thing is not just about the points and the fine. The distraction of being on your phone could also have implications you know you could hit something you could run someone over you could be out of control money talks but cash is always easy to pay with rather than the risk using your phone after drive to obviously you've got to if you are going to use your phone you've got to turn the engine off or put it into half or and by paying my cash it saves you getting points on your licence or a fine it's just not worth taking the risk insurance premiums go up all the time so you know if you've got points on your, on your licence as well that's going to put your premium up even higher the next year and it's going to be on there for the next four years at least so for the next five years it's going to go up in price just not worth the risk not leaving enough space the other thing is, why do we leave that space? Why do we leave tyres and tarmac? Well, if you think about it rationally, okay, yeah, if everyone's close together, you'll get more cars in a smaller space, but if the car behind wasn't paying attention, maybe they're on the phone and they don't realise the traffic has stopped and they smash into the back of you. The likelihood is, if you're close to the car in front, you're going to go into the back of that. The other alternative is as well is if the car in front breaks down, if you're so close, what are you going to have to do 
in order to get away from that vehicle. You've left yourself no room to maneuver out, so your only alternative is going to be to reverse back. But by traveling close to the car in front as well, obviously that um, raises the chance of you being in a multi pileup. So keep your distance, take your time, and you'll get there safely. Top tip if you're driving automatic. When you are stopping at lights, many people don't do this and they often find out the hard way once they get the £3,000 bill for clutch and gearbox work on their automatic car is that when you stop the traffic lights, pop the car into either park or neutral um, depending on what type of car you're in, it might be easier just to go into neutral with the handbrake on but in this car I'm in, the Mercedes, it's easy to pop it into park with just a little button whereas putting it into neutral requires you to put the handbrake on which is down here and then push it into neutral little lever push it up a little bit into neutral but then it doesn't like that because the car thinks it's going to roll away but that stops it then bearing your, your gearbox out because your, your automatic clutch as you said as, as it is I think is constantly engaged with the engine if it's in drive and it's you no know, the engine hasn't turned itself off but also, by taking your foot off the butt brake, how's that helping the drivers behind, especially with night time? Get rid of that dazzling light when it's over night time. It's mad how many things you see when you're on the road and you know you're paying attention. I see loads of people recently. I know they say it's bad to use a mobile phone, but what's the deal with people bringing bugs into the car? It's all animals. Full on ceramic plugs out the, out the kitchen. Now, what's going to happen if you obviously drinking it as you're driving? You shouldn't be doing that anyway, but what's going to happen if you do? If you're in a crash, you've got a ceramic mug 